Prime Minister Fandel Stewart has described the public sector job cuts as a sacrifice that had to be made in the national interest. He spoke publicly on the measure for the first time since it was announced in Parliament last Friday by Finance Minister Chris Sinclair. Shane Seeley has the story. In an interview with the media this morning, Prime Minister Fondel Stewart explained why government had to cut jobs as a last resort. Mr. Stewart says the Democratic Labour Party administration has been holding the hands of Barbadians for the past six years, trying its best to avoid the situation. According to him, for every dollar the government earns, 54 cents goes to paying public servants. And a just-released IMF report shows that 10.3% of Barbados's GDP is accounted for by wages and salaries. That's the highest on record in the Caribbean. The Prime Minister says this is unsustainable, and government had to take a tough decision, sending home workers to cut its wages bill. This is his message to Barbadians. I want to assure the country that we're not going to be just sitting down and by the elegant flourish of a pen or pencil throwing people's lives into disorder. A careful analysis uh, will be done and we will try to make sure that this process is run as smoothly as possible, that households are disrupted minimally, but that the government's objectives are achieved. Prime Minister Stewart was expected to meet with officials from the National Union of Public Workers today to discuss the matter further. He says the NUPW is looking at possible alternatives to mass layoffs. One option that may be put on the table is cutting the salaries of public sector workers. This is an option that is still being exercised in other parts of the world in order to keep people employed. I'm not suggesting at all that that is an option which uh, we would have wanted to contemplate. What I am saying, though, that it, it is an option that it is open uh, to a certain extent to unions representing representative institutions of the workers to put on the table uh, as a way partially out of this. And the Prime Minister also told CBC that government will be looking at providing an adequate safety net to protect workers who are laid off. Shane Seeley, CBC News. The winter tourist season officially started today and Minister of Tourism Richard Seeley believes it will be successful. Well, it certainly got underway with a massive parade in the city this morning, marking the end of Tourism Week 2013. All the indications are certainly from the reports reaching us that, that we have good reason to be optimistic to, about improvements in our long stay arrivals and also for increased benefits through the cruise subsector. So we, we, are, we, are, we are quite happy going into the winter season and, um, and we'll, we'll continue to work hard to see that we can make it through all the challenges. The parade started at Jubilee Gardens and culminated at Heroes Square, where a Bajan Duflicky was held, featuring several aspects of Barbados culture for visitors and locals alike. Some on the sidelines also took part in the activities, dancing with the Mother Sally character and Moko Jumbies. Minister Seely said Tourism Week was very successful this year. The theme for Tourism Week, of course, was achieving success through service excellence. And I have been um, impressed with what we've done during the course of the week. Um, Acknowledge the workers, we had an event for them, of course, we got things going correctly with at a church service as well so we we've had um we've had we've had a number of very good events launched the um the the the, the software application um for mobile devices so it's been a good week police and fire officials are investigating an early morning blaze at melrose in st thomas an unoccupied house reportedly owned by sandra graham of belleville st michael was completely destroyed Ms. Graham says nothing in the uninsured house was saved. She added that she has been living with family members due to surgery up until the fire. 
The blaze broke out around 5 this morning. Two tenders responded to the call, one from headquarters, the other from Arch Hall. Fire officials were able to contain the blaze to that house. A slight earthquake was recorded off Barbados early yesterday morning. The Trinidad and Tobago-based UE Seismic Research Center says the tremor had a magnitude of 3.8 and struck south of the island at a depth of 66 kilometers. This event may have been felt in nearby islands. Several other minor quakes were recorded in the Northern Caribbean in the area of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico yesterday and today. Well, Barbadians are paying a little less for petroleum products from today. As of midnight last night, there was a slight dip in the price of fuel. Gasoline now costs eight cents less, priced at three dollars and three cents per liter, while the price of diesel went down by just a cent, retailing at two dollars and seventy-eight cents. The cost of kerosene remained unchanged at a dollar and eighty-two cents per liter. Now, as far as bottled gas is concerned, the retail price of the 100-pound cylinder dropped just over $12 from $192.40 to $180.16. The 25-pound cylinder costs $3 less, now priced at $50.14. People will now pay $44.29 for the 22-pound cylinder, a saving of over $2.00. And the 20-pound cylinder moved from $42.71 down to $40.26. If a prominent medical practitioner had his way, healthcare officials in Barbados would have to sign on to a code of conduct. Professor Sir Errol Mickey Walren says this would have to be continuous training for all categories of workers, including those at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. There may be variations, but I think it's so important um, I think it's important for a patient to know what is the ethical conduct that is expected of a doctor. I think that it is Im important for the patient to also know what is the ethical conduct that is expected of a porter and that everybody must know what is expected of everybody else. Sir Errol, who now leads the Sir Arnott Cato Foundation, told CBC a code of conduct is badly needed. We operate because we just assume that we have been brought up properly. You know? <laughs> and, we, and we say if somebody does something wrong, oh, well, they, didn't, they weren't brought up properly. Um, I, th I think that's, that should be passé. We, we need to be able to, to train everyone uh, how to conduct themselves. And can't, we can't leave it to being brought up. <laughs> Crime Stoppers Barbados is playing its part in helping Interpol with its Fugitive Roundup campaign, conducted primarily in the Caribbean and Latin America. Some 15 fugitives wanted by global law enforcement are believed to be hiding out in Central America, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Venezuela, or the Caribbean. The fugitives are linked to organized crime networks and wanted for offenses including murder and drug trafficking. International Fugitive Roundup and Arrest Americas was launched in Costa Rica in November involving 46 countries and territories and targeting 266 fugitives. Executive Director of Crime Stoppers Barbados, Devrol Dupini, says the roundup has proven to be a success in the past and the local arm will play an active role in trying to apprehend the wanted fugitives. We will be directing the, the public to view the details of these wanted persons on the Interpol website, which is www.interpol.int. We are hoping that our local media houses may be able to publish the images which we would have sent them circulated this morning. The initiative runs from today, December 16th, uh, until such time as Interpol um, determines. And we are really asking the local media to, to work with us, to partner with us in getting that information to really sensitize our public about these fugitives in an attempt to ask the, the public to come forward with any information which they may have. People reporting information directly to Interpol are being urged to note that they will not be guaranteed anonymity.
they can visit the Interpol website uh, at www.interpol.int. But the difference is if you report directly to Interpol, it is not anonymous. Whereas True Crime Stoppers, the, your identity will remain anonymous. Barbadians bearing gifts turned out in their numbers last night at Ilara Court for the annual charity event Carols by Candlelight. It was an evening of fun and excitement with patrons being well entertained by the mustard seed kids and local performers. A highlight of the evening was the lighting of the candles. The event was held under the patronage of Prime Minister Fundal Stewart. He says the event has grown over the years with many now looking forward to Carols by Candlelight every year. The Prime Minister urged Barbadians as they reflect on the life of Jesus to remember those who live in troubled zones across the globe. Reflect too on those people in various parts of the world. Reflect on those people across the globe tonight whose flames of hope are burning low because of civil war, because of famine, because of terrorism and because of displacement and just reflect on how fortunate we in Barbados are to be here this evening to enjoy carols by candlelight. President of the Rotary Club of Barbados, Ron Davis, is pleased with the level of support from Barbadians and visitors to the event over the last 18 years. You have come and you have supported this event. And you have allowed us, by doing that, to do the work that we do in Rotary. You've taught your kids to bring a gift, to give another child, and that's one of the most important lessons that you could teach, giving. You've brought, you've, you've come, you've spent your money, you've bought the food, you've bought your tickets, and you also have in turn given. Two organizations came together recently with the common goal of helping people in need. It was all part of Love Day, now in its fourth year. The two main organizers, Kimar Safri of the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society and entertainer Terry, Mexican author of the Love Day Project, combined their efforts in Queen's Park. Mr. Arthur said scores of volunteers assisted in preparing food hampers and wrapping gifts for children to be delivered all over the island. He and other entertainers have also visited the QEH's Children's Ward and Geriatric Hospital to perform and take hampers and gifts. They mainly find the people in most in need via Facebook. I would put on Facebook to tell people to check in the neighborhoods for any elderly people, people living alone, people who would need some help with food stuff or little kids who would like some toys. And you know, they give me a list of names. Or it's just random. We may just be driving through a street and we see a house and say, yes, let's knock here and see what's happening. So that's always a good visit because totally by surprise. Head of the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society, Kimar Safri, said his organization usually sees more people in need at this time of year. We love to put on this event for our persons in need. Um, we deal with the homeless and the, the persons are vagrants or, um, that need our assistance that have been coming to our office over the years. Um, so far we have 130 plus um, clients coming to our office every day um, for our services. So this is sort of the way we pull them together, we socialize, we give them hampers, um, we give them food stuff, we give them food, we give them free haircut, they play dominoes, karaoke, uh, they have counseling here as well. The European Union is committed to assisting non-governmental entities. This is according to Ambassador Mikhail Barford, head of delegation for the EU delegation for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. He was speaking at a graduation ceremony for 17 NGO practitioners who successfully completed the certificate in NGO management course. The EU recognizes the importance of non-state actors in development and pays special attention uh, to their added value. We, um, the notion of non-state actors can be extended to a vast range of different actors, um, but a common feature lies uh, in their independence from the state 
and their voluntary basis.